The world is full of complex problems, from designing an education system to a citywide public transportation network. This morning, I got the train into the city, but now I need to get to Shoals offices on Angus Street. I think I'm going to get a bus or a tram, but I'll figure it out. Designing something like a transportation system takes systems thinking. It's no coincidence that Adelaide Station is the hub for this place, and there's plenty of bus stops, a couple of tram stops, so my options are open. And these systems line up pretty well when they're running on time. Designing something such as a citywide public transportation network is a complex problem. I mean, you can buy a bus and you can buy a tram, but you can't really buy the network. It takes a lot of processes and methods to get that right. It requires a consideration of all the various stakeholders, government, individuals, individual operating companies, to make it work properly. Systems engineering provides a structured approach from which you can look at these problems and better understand what they are and enable a better holistic design. These problems aren't just technical, there are a host of social and cultural problems that are just as complex, such as global warming or the massive plastic island that's in our ocean. Another well-known example of systems engineering in practice are the NASA Apollo missions. NASA engineers had to consider the launcher requirements, the amount of payload they could take, or even the potential landing sites before starting to design a solution. They had to look at the hardware and software that was available, the time evolving budget, and even reassess the scientific and engineering needs of the mission. And they had to look at all these things at the same time. Systems engineering presents a series of approaches and methodologies through which we can better understand these problems. So where do we even start? Well, a good place is the systems engineering V, or the design life cycle. Now this is a process all products go through from their conceptual design to their operation in their environment. So you can see at the start, there's the problem definition. So a good design process begins with understanding what the problem actually is. And then after that, you move into your concept. And after you've got a concept, you can then start to flesh out what the system needs to do or to look like, and eventually get to your requirements. Your requirements are real specific, and that's typically what a company will grab and say, all right, I'm going to build this. And that's when you get into your design and build phase. So you're designing the details of your capability and actually building it. And then you start to move up the other side of the V, where you're verifying and validating what you've built against your system requirements and also against the actual problem. So is what you've built fit for what you conceptualized? And is it also fit for what the problem actually was? Did you actually fix the problem? 